What's up? Ryan Wynn here with another episode of Late Night Inks, and tonight we have a very special episode. Tonight our special guest is going to be Longshot, but right now we are looking at the very first issue of Longshot. His introduction into the Marvel Universe was created by Anne Nocenti and Arthur Adams with inks by Will Spertasio. Uh, I believe the colors were by Rosen and letters were by Workman, but I could be wrong on that, and you know I don't do any research. I go off my memory for these videos. But this was a book came out in 85. I was nine at the time. I didn't come across it till I was around 11. Um, then I, uh, I think he was already in the X-Men by then. And I was reading that, was more interested in that, and then found the series. I'm trying to remember. Um, part of me thinks I, re I came in when issue six came out, and then I had to backtrack and get the previous issues. Either way, in San Diego, 1991, uh, July 6th, I got Arthur Adams' autograph on the front, and it was one of the first times somebody signed on the cover with a Sharpie. Up until then, all my signatures had been on the interior with a ballpoint pen. But alright, we are a minute and 22 in, and I want to get started. I already did warm-ups, and here's our long shot for tonight, for the ink along. What's the ink along? Well, this image is available in the link down below, and you can download it and print it up yourself. And get to inking and this is on a 7x10 Bristol board but you can do whatever size you want I do them this size so that I can pack it in a bag and board and then eventually maybe ship it out to somebody um, I am going to be using stinger my trusty 8404 size 2 brush link for that in the description as well we're gonna dip our brush two-thirds of the way not all the way up on the the bristles we're going to sharpen it by wiping it on a little extra piece of board we have on the side. Get that blade nice and sharp. Now I've left a lot of ink on her, so she's uh, pretty full right now. So we're going to do some big heavy lines. Um, these uh, triangu triangular pieces here, these represent his collar, his black collar, and they're a little stylistic. So that's going to be black. Uh, there's going to be rendering and shading on the face and his blonde hair. I had started to do some rendering on it, but I think I might just do the outlines on the hair and leave it at that so that we kind of have uh, a three, a, a gray, a white, and a black element to the, to the piece. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. All right, so we are going to do this. We're not going to do one giant line yet. You know what? You want to see one giant line? Let's start off with one giant line. Let's do it. Let's be bold. I'm the ink king for, for Chris' sake. All right, so we're going to start in the middle. Our arm is uh, square with the center of this curved line that we're going to do. There's going to be a little bit of wrist and a little bit of elbow. Uh, we're going to line this up. We're going to adjust the board so our elbow's locked in place. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let's see, we're going to press down there and then change direction there. And since this is going to be black, the inside of your line can be as messy as you want. All right, here we go. Boom, one big line. And then we're going to do this here as we rotate the board. And you know what? I'm going to change direction uh, because I wasn't going to do that whole bottom piece at first, but now that we did, I'm going to cut back over here and join up these lines here. And just like we squared off that, that first big 
big chunk. That's how that's how I do almost every line. Uh, I just do it very quickly. You do not have to ink as quickly as I do. You do not have to try to keep up with me. If you are learning, you want to, uh, or even even if you're slightly experienced, you want to uh, ink at a comfortable pace. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of working myself as a printer. I'm going to come back and do this hair, but since some of it tucks behind his face in the ear, I wanted to do those first. And then we'll cut over here and we'll continue with the contours this way. There's no wet lines under our hands here. And remember, everything is just bits of lines. Some of it's long lines, some of it's short lines, some of it's thick to thin, some of, some of it's thin to thick, some of it's just a thin line, thick line. You know, that's almost a meditation you kind of want to have as you're inking, is just thinking about what you're inking. <clears throat> Inking can be uh, very meditative and very relaxing. That's why I recommend it to people that aren't even artists. Uh, they think they can't draw. They are uh, not inclined to do such things. But I have done the drawing for you, and it's a pretty clean piece that you've printed up. And it doesn't matter how clean you ink it or how good it is. Uh, what matters is that you enjoyed the process and got into it and had the the nerve to ink another artist because it takes some guts to do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we do have another of our uh, eye burst characters here. Uh, was it last week we did Cable? Maybe the week before? I think it was last week. Cable was our guest of honor. Was also a requested character for our homie Josh, who's usually in the crowd. Um, I did not know that. I got I go off a blind list for the requests, and uh, the requests go off to the people that made them after I choose them. So feel free to do this however you want as well. Uh, if you want to do more angular, if you want to add extra points or you know do the the glimmer and glam your own uh in your own way go ahead and do that this isn't about inking like me like i said it's about uh just stepping up and having the guts to relax and ink because yeah it's a funny thing it's uh inking makes people very nervous or anxious but then once you start it's a very relaxing process um, let's see, okay, we've done contours, the face and jacket. Let's go in and do these uh, lovely locks of his. Where do I want to start? Let's start on top. And I'm going to do a little bit of heavier weight on the undersides of the hair, but not much. Uh, doing kind of bold lines around the contours and thinner lines on the interior. <clears throat> And here, when you're doing hair, you can kind of whip your hand, especially with a brush. It it, it really likes to produce uh, the hairs of the brush produce great hair lines. Here's where you want to get some. Make sure you get these tapers, where it pinches in and then out. And here we'll have some breaks in the hair, but I want to do as little. <clears throat> Let's get some more ink. I want to do as little detail and lines as possible on the hair, uh, just as a design choice today. There's something I want to try. We may end up doing some rendering here or there, but we will see. That might even be something uh, I save and try out in colors and do a coloring video on this, because I really want to color this when I'm done. I do have another series of videos that I do called Running Laps, and that's probably what I will uh, do the coloring on this in, and that's a Procreate Time Lapse series where I take a sketchbook snapshot or a picture of a drawing I've done like this, a uh, picture with the camera, drop it into Procreate, and then either, you know, digitally ink, paint, do whatever it is, animate, whatever the task may be. 
and I just posted a video of a Hammerella painting uh, yesterday. So if you haven't seen that, go check that out. It's uh, about six minutes long. It's a time lapse with commentary. I'm trying to step up my painting game. So I'm going to be attempting to do more pieces like that one. All right, this is a bit of a sideburn coming down here. I forgot to do the top of the ear. There we go. And then we get the hairs going behind the ear there. <clears throat> Uh, and don't feel like you have to throw your lines in the same direction I do either. Because sometimes uh, throwing a curved line in this direction can be a, a little harder for newer inkers. And if that's the case, practice it off uh, on a practice sheet. You know, keep practicing those, but don't, you know, you don't have to try to pull that off here if you're trying to make the best piece you can. All right, now we're getting into his mullet. You're like, Ryan, do you like mullets? Because there's a, your main character in Gods and Gears has a mullet. Uh, yeah, I do. I do like mullets. Um, I think mullets are super cool, man. And I think they look cool in comics. And some of my favorite characters have had them. And Jimmy in Gods and Gears is... Uh, Partially based and inspired by Longshot. And even uh, down to the point where the, you know, he doesn't have a, an, a sparkly eye, he has an eye patch. So there's a, a one eye kind of thing going on there. And he's hurled through time and space on an adventure just like Long, Longshot was. And we're even going to have. Uh, a race world that's similar to Mojo World, not quite as uh, dangerous or wild. Uh, we're still working out some of the details, but we're getting started on the next story arc for Gods and Gears. Uh, we'll get Dean busy on issues uh, 5 through 8 as I am working on the art for Hammerella. I'm working on a double page spread right now for Hammerella that is freaking insane. Um, it has to do with the, the ember hawks, um, these big phoenix looking kind of firebirds that live in the world that she was, uh, raised in. And there is a link in the description down below if you are new around here and you don't know what I'm talking about. It is a book that we're crowdfunding. It's tied to my series, Gods and Gears, that I write in color. And it is about a half demigod, half witch that is raised on a distant hostile world and she finally escapes and finds herself in the midst of a galactic war where she has to fight through a bunch of giant mechs and battleships in order to try to find her true home. Uh, it's a really fun series. It's really colorful. You can uh, even just check out some of my videos to, to see some of the art if you'd like. The link is in the description. We are funded and in demand. Let's see. I kind of want, whoa! Had one of my lights swing swing around there. That was weird. <clears throat> one of the screws came loose. All right. Anyways, as I was saying, there's a little more uh, gray to this, and this is whiter. If you blur your eyes to see. So basically, I did more rendering. There's more more lines there. And I want to balance that out just a little bit here. But I do think I want to keep the hair relatively light on the lines. I was going to, I don't know, we're going to decide that. Just decide that later because I don't know if you can see on camera. I did my little uh, John Romita Sr. kind of lines where you do some rendering lines from the uh, the crown. And then you do a, a round between the rim light and then at the ends you do some light rendering. It's uh, how he would do, you know, Gwen Stacy's hair. Uh, what's the other one? MJ, Mary Jane. All right, now we're gonna go in and do broken. I do broken lines on my eyebrows. A lot of people don't like to outline eyebrows at all. I kind of like them as a shape, so I tend to do this. Like I said, broken lines around it that don't really have any shadow or weight. Uh, they just kind of 
to find the shape of the eyebrow. And then I'll go in, since he's got blonde eyebrows, I'll just go in and do a few wispy lines here and then spread them out as we go through the brow. And then at the end, we'll maybe we'll tighten it up again like that. And there we go, there we got our blonde eyebrows. And you don't have to do as many lines over here because it's got the glow going on. And while we're over here, let's do a chisel line. Let's do one of them. And one of them. There we go, that eye's done. <clears throat> a little bit of a tangent here. Maybe we bring this glow line there. Make these all a little longer. There we go. Dungeon Kong, the monkey king. He likes to fight and he likes to sing. Okay, now we are uh, we are moving through this pretty good. 15 minutes. Looks like this might be just be a 20 minute video tonight. I'm trying to do some uh, shorter, quicker ones, so you guys are still getting the same brush practice, but the videos aren't as long, and uh, more people can maybe get through them. And then every once in a while, I'll, we will do longer form ones. Uh, like I think next week we will still do a Wednesday night episode. But I'm trying to get it so that I can have a creator named uh, Michael Bancroft on, who does a book called The Lucent. And Michael's a really fun guy, a really great creator, and he had me on his channel. And it was one of my uh, favorite streaming experiences. And I really like his character Ella, and his book The Lucent looks awesome. I backed it. It's in demand. And I drew a version of his character uh, that... I would like to ink and have him on to uh, join us for the ink along. And it's a little more elaborate of a piece. Uh, she has the long hair that's, it's, you know, headshot like I normally do, but she has long hair that is uh, floating up as if she's underwater. It's uh, pretty interesting. It has to do with the dream element of the story. Uh, it's called The Lucent Waking Dream. I think you guys will enjoy that. It'll be a fun inking experience. It's not a well-known character, but like I said, it's going to have uh, a lot of hair that we're going to get to play with, with our, our brushes and stuff. And she has a leather coat on, and then also a female face is just fun to ink. So we're going to have a nice, clean female face to ink. Uh, we're going to have the uh, long flowing hair to ink, and then the leather jacket. Uh, so inking the nose, uh, do that top line first. So always remember, uh, let's see, the nose. Let's see if I got a little spot right here. So you got your side of your nostril, and then do that guy, and then that. It's two, two little moves when you do the nostril. Just do a top piece, and then a piece that tucks underneath. And it looks very much like an eye, but it's, think of it like a little entrance to a cave. Anyways. We're gonna hit this guy up with the chisel line and then we'll do that side of the nose. All right, we are moving and grooving. We got a little bit of that little divot there and let's do his goofy smile. It's kind of a standard goofy smile shape that I do, but it seems to work well and I like it. Do some little rendering there. Where's cheeks tuck into his mouth and then let's get this jaw I'm gonna I'm gonna do the lips uh, this direction and then the little chin lines this direction there we go let's get these jowls going his cheekbones uh, you know, because of the the lighting, you would normally go heavier on this side, but we're doing sort of a 
corner piece headshot style, so we're not going to necessarily uh, worry about the, the lighting of his eye affecting everything too much. And do as many lines here as you want. I do, I do three to four, depending on how I feel. Uh, you, again, you don't have to copy it. I really like to see people do their own thing on it. Uh, my buddy and wrench in the chat, Ty Ranger, uh, does his own rendering completely over it. He does uh, thin line gray shading where he breaks up the forms of the shape different or of the face differently, and it looks really cool doing his own thing. And it comes out stronger if you do your own thing. A little hint of the Adam's apple there. And then we're going to switch up brushes. We're going to bring out the big dog here. And put a little water on that. Now we're going to fill in the blacks for the collar. Uh, this is now called spotting the blacks. Originally, spotting the blacks meant... Uh, the inker would go in, or pencil, or whoever's doing the finishing, would go in and the drawing would basically be inked as line art with no solid blacks and you would spot the blacks by going in and doing cast shadows here and there under the chins and noses and arms and things like that um, and then by the time I became an inker spotting the blacks was the assistant's term or was a term for the what the assistant did um, so say I was working for Danny, Mickey, Joe Weems, or John Lovese, three guys I, I worked for and they had inked this, they would have put X's in all around here. And I would know that I was supposed to spot that solid black. And I've said this before on the show, uh, I've never looked it up, but I, my guess is that it was originally a K, because in the CMYK, uh, the K is black. So that's, I think it was shorthand for a K. Just kind of became an X, but I don't know. I could be wrong. All right, we just broke the 20 minute mark. And the cat is back playing with his toy in the other room. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but that's... Frankie Beans, the shy one. Rocket's usually the one that you guys see, the orange cat. But yes, I have a second cat named Frankie Beans. And it was really funny when I met Frankie B. Washington, because I was like, yo, dude, that's my cat's name, is Frankie B. All right, so when you're filling in your solid black areas, uh, I don't scrub with the brush, even though I'm moving back and forth fast and, or quickly. I'm only touching the paper in one direction, like when I'm pulling towards myself. I'm not scrubbing back and forth like that. And even when I'm doing these, go in one direction. Um, if you have a brush that you like to scrub with, that's, that's fine. You can do that. If you're trying to get a dry brush effect, that's one way to do it. I'm going to go in and solidify these black shapes and then I got to get this drying and scanned so that I can have it posted and ready for you guys at the start of this video. <clears throat> Alright, I think that's it. Let's look, them, let's look them over. I've got a couple issues with the eye I want to work out. Bring that in a little more, and I actually want to do some shading on the eyelids a little. There we go. And let's add a couple more here under that the nose there. There we go. What else? What else? What am I missing? Let's see. I'm very careful not to touch that. What? wet area there but we're gonna do some rendering on his lower lip here give that a little more dimension there we go I like that and there we have a long shot all right I'm going to sign it here uh, you go ahead and sign your name down below 
And if you'd like me to share it in a video, go ahead and put your at or your social media contact, whatever you want people to know about you. Put that nice and big across the bottom. You don't have to put it on the actual drawing or something, but uh, put it across the bottom before you send it my way so that people know who did what and can, you can get proper credit or somebody can be like, hey man, I like that guy's inks. Uh, I want him to ink my stuff because you never know. You never know who's going to see your stuff. So thank you for joining. Thank you for joining if you were just here in the live chat. Uh, if you are new here, these are pre-recorded videos, but I'm hanging out in the chat uh, for your questions, discussions, and roasts, and such things. Uh, check out Hammerella in the link below. And uh, join us every week on the Geronimo Draws channel. On Tuesdays, we do a draw stream. And... I'm often found over on Death Curse, where we are doing a 24-hour comic broken up into eight pieces, three-hour chunks, but you can only work on the pieces live on camera, and that's that's been really fun. We've got a bunch of people participating and joining in. So uh, I think that's everything. Uh, yeah, links below. Uh, let me know what, how you did on yours, and until next time, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And take it easy.